everyone, welcome to the premiere of my new channel, Geek Central Station, where the awesome will just keep on chugging. My name is John. Today we have a, what I want to call a Retro Monday review, where I review older figures from before the movie times, because I want to. For this week, we'll be reviewing R.I.D. Scourge. And this is a figure I've been excited about for a very long time. I've considered this one of my biggest grails to try to get, and it's just, oh, it meets every one of my expectations. I never owned, I never owned this when I was a kid, but now to have it now, it, it brings back good memories. Now, for comparison, I have here Optimus Prime from the R.I.D. television show. Got here, get a nice size comparison right here. But the whole trailer and kit and caboodle. Scourge is definitely longer than Optimus. Oh yeah. But Scourge is thinner, like from the front view. Whoa. One thing about Optimus is that he's pretty solid, even though with the, the little connections. I think maybe I had a few issues while filming with these. But for the most part, everything holds pretty, pretty sturdy. But that's not what we're reviewing. Scourge here holds pretty, pretty sturdily. And then we have here contemporary version of him, of that same old the Laser Optimus Prime. And of course, he doesn't have a trailer because he's small. That's not to say he's not cool. The possibility is what makes him not cool, but I'll show that off later. Let's go ahead and take the trailer out of here. We got these two, two clones of each other. Girls are pretty, pretty similar. He's got like a fiery detail, but of course, different character altogether. We're looking more at mold differences or mold similarities. Got that chrome, chrome bumper, Ooh. and you have translucent bits up in here, as well as this one also has that. So that's that's a good similarity. Right there we go. Scourge is obviously bigger. He's more of like a Voyager-sized guy. Well, technically at the time leader, but. Comparing him with, say, Ultra Magnus, I'd say Ultra Magnus is more of a leader than the other guys. Because just standalone, he, I'm gushing too much about a different figure. Alrighty. And let's have another modern comparison. I have X Graver here from the Hercules set. Because third parties are cool. Get a little green right there. Size difference. I'm gonna grab him and pull him off stage. Nope, Scourge is too strong. Alright, moving on. Let's show off the details of this guy, shall we? And zoom in. Like I was saying, got the, the nice chrome bumper right there. It's very shiny. And let's look at the details of this guy a bit more closely, shall we? You can see all the nice pinstriping teal paint on him. It's got all the, the details of the door here, the I think the fuel tank right there, and all along the hood, and the, the, the very nice red translucent windows. And you can see through those windows, you can see, see fingers in front, there we go. Seats and steering wheel. Whole console and dash. It's, it's a bit hard to see, but it's there. Ah, there you go. That's perfect. It's it's a shame that the smokestacks are cut. I don't know if that is from the original release or or what. If they were longer, if they shortened them for Scourge. It kind of sad, but it's 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 fine. I, 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 I guess. I like my long smokestacks, man. That's why I like Masterpiece Optimus Prime. The new one keeps its long smokestacks. I digress. 
and you have the nice chrome bumper right there I'm trying to get the the light to reflect off it there you go very shiny and you got the right angle Let's see if we can get it to blind you there we go it's gonna blind you okay you also have a sword that stores underneath voila that is very cool Got his sword right here. You can shine a light through it. We got those new Star Trek uh, light tech things. Grab one of those bricks and shine the light up through it, and it just looks glorious. Oh yes, very awesome indeed. And it attaches on here via a groove right there, which you can see. And there's a couple. Right there. Right there. Get through, folks. Couple of grooves right there. But it just all slots into. And if you'll notice that the sword is asymmetrical, part of the blade is on a lower portion instead of centered on the on the hilt. So if you're an asymmetrical freak like I am, I, I like things to be very symmetrical. Uh, that might bug you and might not. I barely noticed it until I started recording for this review. But it's just something to note. This camera clearly likes to focus on him and not the sword. So fine. Let us move to the transformation. Let me zoom out here. Alrighty. So what you're going to want to start doing is pulling back on the legs right there. And you have the feet. They're just a simple hinge. Pull them forward from the back. And you can stand him up. Right there. I'm just going to go ahead and bring it, bring it in. Separate that right there because there's holes. And no, there's holes. There's the pegs. Everything's kind of black, so it all just kind of blends in. And then we have the arms right here. You're just going to want to pull them out from the sides. They're just kind of pinned in between these these points on the hip. Just going to grab it firmly and pull. Let's see from the side here. Or from the front, rather. This guy does not want to be transformed for some reason. There we go. One side is tighter than the other. All right. And you take this top, the hood, and you split it in half, and you bring it down. Now there's two hinges in here. You'll notice. This hinge inside here is the one you're going to want to turn to get it out. And then this hinge right here, you got to turn it on there to get it down onto the side. Do the same thing for the other side. You got you gotta kinda push down on the whole thing. Not on the body. Those legs kinda like to slide down a bit. Kinda hold down and then tilt up. It's like you're you're pushing the force down and up at the same time to get that to rotate because the the hinge for the actual shoulder is tighter than the one that's in here. Now unfortunately on mine, and now that I mention it, it's not doing it. This shoulder here is a bit loose. Oh, there we go. See. I smacked this arm, and the shoulder moved. Smacked this arm, it doesn't move in. It stays still. That's probably between figure to figure. Just thought of something you should be aware of. Because I'm all informative like that. And then you pull. Oh, you pull his face out from inside his chest. Right there. Let's go. Tighter feel. There we go. And what you're going to want to do without blocking your lighting. You pull up on the tab slightly, and then rotate 
out, grab the head, and there's this little hinge bit right there. You're going to want to slide it on that track until it goes right there, and you close up the chest, and you rotate the head. And watch the light piping be awesome. I mean, like, look at that. It takes the light from the other room. I mean, granted, I have a big light on here, but I usually have it on the desk, and the monitor light coming through it just keeps it at pretty much this brightness as well. And even when I have it off, it's like always on. It's like he's just staring into my soul. Staring into your soul. Anyway. So there you have him, all transformed. You take the sword, you can put it into any side. Just go ahead and slot it into here. Now originally when this toy was released back in G2, it had a light up gimmick where the battery box was in the back here. And you have the button, which still is functional. You can press it, but there's obviously no electronics or wiring. And the wiring went down and through the arm. And when you pressed it, it lit up the sword. And also he has a gun. See, it has a red translucent peg. You plug that into the hand. It would light them both up and he'd have light coming out of the sword and the gun. Very cool stuff. Unfortunately, this doesn't have it, but he really doesn't need it. I mean, it looks good already on his own. And surprisingly, compared to his contemporary counterpart, he has a lot of posability for being such an old toy. Okay, let's go ahead and do his posability, shall we? He's got 360 degree rotation on his head because of the transformation when he eats his own head. <laughs> and then he's got a 180 uh, swivel on the shoulder. That's because of the old uh, electronic gimmick that the G2 Optimi Laser Optimus Prime had. So, yeah. And that is what's going to account for all the, the arm posability. Because you've got an, only a 90 degree bicep swivel. You have this outward shoulder movement. And then a 90 degree elbow, as you can see right there. No hand posability, obviously. Both arms are the same. Um, he's got waist articulation. Which is awesome. I mean, like, where did that go? Most... Most current Transformers don't have a waist joint unless it's a transformation joint, which is really kind of sad. And then for the legs, you have regular um, waist or hip, I guess you'd call that hip rotation, outward, inward, and regular and backward. It's all ratchety, ratchety goodness. And he's got ratcheted knees. And I guess you could say his feet have a little bit of posability, but they just mostly just snap back. They just have this point and that point. They have no other points in between, so he really doesn't have it. Back in R.I.D., Scourge was the leader of the Decepticons, because Megatron at the time was a Predacon, going off of the, the tail end of all the Beast Wars, Beast Machine stuff. Uh, I don't know why they wrote it that way, but there you go. Megatron was a Predacon, and then Scourge became the leader of the Decepticons, because they got them all from Autobot um, stasis pods. Him and Bruticus, well, Ruination, which is just basically a repaint, and I guess a retool for the weapons so they could combine better, of the G1 Bruticus, and they call him Ruination. And this is the bad guy that started the whole Nemesis Prime thing, because you got him, and then you got the, the Comic-Con one, and then that also has a fans project armor set up to it. And you also have this guy right here repainted in Nemesis colors for the Transformers Collectors Club annual subscription service thing, which is delayed for, for whatever reason. And I was all hot and heavy to get one so I could have a version of this guy. But since I have this one, I really don't need a contemporary repaint in this mold because honestly this guy does it for me I feel he has just a lot more posability and ease of posability than this one does I mean he's limited right here 
Okay, he can do that, BFD. He's got this flap right here. Sure, he's got hand pose ability, but it really, uh, really does he need it? Where this guy can go and just punch him over, you know? Like, give me a break. All right, let's do some other comparisons. We got Shockwave right here. He's a bit short, I'll have to say, but that's because that's a that's a deluxe. Got another deluxe right here. That's kickback with these little thingies that comes up tall. And you got his master right here. Let me go ahead and get rid of those guys. You got his master right here. Megatron, Predacon, in his dragon mode. Because I feel like it. I have had him in robot mode for so many years. I figure I should transform him. There you go. Rawr. I'm not scared of you. Rawr. It's because he's a badass. And you got his underlings. Ruination. He, Ruination is obviously taller, but in the scale of the show, should be about here on him, like head to the legs, because these guys were all about the same size or whatnot. But again, it's a G1 toy, repainted. That's what a lot of our, the R.I.D. line was, was coming back with old toys, redoing them up, which gave them a bigger budget to do newer toys like the Optimus Prime and the Ultra Magnus and the Megatron. Because, you know, the, the biggest repaints they did was the Fortress Maximus, which... I think was Sentinel Maximus. I'll, I'll correct myself in the video if I got that wrong, but I think it was Sentinel Maximus. Because they were looking for those old parts to bring him back and whatnot. His trailer, which is actually all complete. I think I may be missing one disc, because I think there's supposed to be five, not the four that I have. But am I really going to be launching out the discs? Maybe. Yeah, let's move this around, fling it out. Yeah. If you didn't notice, you twist this knob to shoot them all out. Cause there's a little thing in there. That does that? Okay, enough of with the discs. Let's put him off to the side and focus on the trailer for right now. It is very chromatastic, and you can see myself in it. Hello. <laughs> all right. Very indeed crumbtastic. Like, oh my god, gushing, gushing. And right here you have Scourge D12, which is actually the Destron uh, number classification for him over in Takara, over in Japan. Just see all the detail on this, it's just incredible. Now, what could be inside, hmm? Well, for one, his gun can store in there. Just set that off to the side. You have an extra missile, which they really don't have a spot for. It's just kind of in there. They have two of these. Because in this side, there's a spot for it. And in this side, there's a spot for a bunch of extra missiles. Uh, different sized missiles. Just this big old thing. Set that off to the side. Open it up. I guess the sword could go in there, too. Um, okay, and you can see right there, that extra missile goes there, and then right there, you notice something, something different. Really what you should do is stand it up, rotate this up and do that, and then right here, there's this turret thing that you push out. See right here. See right here. Just push on that. You release this thing. You have a ball joint. Just plug that in. And you have this Giganto 5 missile turret that has extra turrets on the inside of this chrome part. It's a base, a freaking 
space, man. This is awesome. And then, if you notice, on the back, there's a little button right here. You push that, it spring loads the whole thing to open. That comes forward, and this has a little stand that he could stand on. And then, this right here is a little plunger. You pull it down. This has got a little groove right here that goes up into there. Pull this out, it has a tube, and you can squeeze it. What's the purpose of this squeezing, Commander? Well, I will tell you. Without trying to scratch the chrome to hell. This little area right here, we got a cannon. That is for the missiles. North Korea, eat your heart out. Anyway, just kidding. Ah! And you pull, push the plunger, and depending how hard you do it, it will go flying. Let me see. Trying not to break it, because it is old and the hose came with a kink in it. I'm always trying to get that out. Alrighty. Let's see if I can do this. May it come out a little bit. It's very tricky. There we go. I got that. Not a better angle. Not at all. Okay. That is... There we go. Okay. A little crash there. And you're supposed to push this. Ah, oh, there we go. That was a little better. Oh, you can do it. And it worked, but it hit my arm, so it didn't go very far. But yes, it can launch. You got this whole base set up, which is very, very cool. And a nice addition to what was already an amazing figure. Now, if you can pick this guy up for, I guess, 30, which is what I picked it up, it's really great. But unfortunately, on the aftermarket, it's going for maybe about, maybe... 50 or 60 which is a really really a steep price but that must mean because there's a limited stock of people wanting to actually sell it because who would want to sell this I mean unless you're having issues this, this is a great figure and anybody that loves the character loves the thought of an evil Optimus Prime or loves the show R.I.D. should really really go all whole hog into this thing Okay, so now it's time, when you're done playing, to close this thing up. What you're going to want to do first is raise this top part. Get this right here. Raise this top part all the way. It's going to spring at you, and it needs to hit those two connectors. And go all the way back, and it clips. Let's see, where is it clip? Oh, it clips in right in here, in this part right here. And these springs help to push it back out when it presses the button. And then you can bring it down, right there. And you'll wanna kinda of just bring these in both at the same time, like that. Okay, and you can just take this and just kinda of stick it in there at an angle. And then stick the gun in there. I'd prefer you not put the sword in there just because it kind of I just kind of I forgot how to word this. I'd recommend that you don't put the sword I'd recommend that you don't put the sword in here just because there's really not a lot of room for it and it's meant to go on the bottom of the figure's alt mode so 
really no reason to, because I mean, if you have him in robot mode, you're gonna want the sword in his hand, because it just looks amazing. You're not really gonna wanna just put it away. Well, I guess right there it works out pretty well, and you can just close it up. Huh. And my preference is to keep it on the figure, but I guess you can put it here. It doesn't matter either way. And now you have him all done. And the little discs here are shaped like this. You got the little hole in the middle, I'm not sure why. Maybe for aerodynamics. Then you have it right here. Just line it up on those two lines and slide them down. And that's going to be all for Scourge on this Retro Monday. Be sure to tune in later in the week for our current review. And next week for another Retro Monday. And maybe I'll be doing Third Party Wednesdays. We'll see. I also got to fit in some other non-Transformers and stuff in that schedule. Just keep on tuning in here at Geek Central Station. Where the awesome just keeps on chugging. Don't forget to check out Gameplay First and the Home Atomics Network. Home Atomics!